No mercy is the name and no mercy is the game as Becky Lynch and Tiffany Stratton meet in an Extreme Rules match and will do whatever it takes to leave the end of the night with the NXT Women's Championship. Welcome back guys to Fog Wrestling. This is your NXT No Mercy 2023 review. Pretty decent show, let's just say it straight off the bat. I enjoyed NXT No Mercy and I, I tend to find myself enjoying NXT shows and NXT premium live event shows better than the main roster, which is just wrong. It shouldn't be that way. That should not be the case. The flagship shows, the main roster shows, should be better. But time and time again, they're not. And I thought this NXT was pretty damn good, for at least for 2023 anyway. And we'll talk about that throughout this video. But I just want to say, Tiffany Stratton, for me, she is destined to be the, the, the best woman in this company. She is a future star. It's only a matter of time before she is put onto the main roster and she is the women's champion or WWE champion or world women's champion or whatever they call those belts these days on Raw or SmackDown. I tell you what, I used to hate when they called them the Raw Women's Championship and the SmackDown Women's Championship, but now those two separate names, so I'm, I'm still not even sure what they're called. So I think this is a SmackDown one called the WWE Women's Champ and the other one's called the World Women's. I don't know. Well, like, she's got to win one of them. She'll probably win both of them. But I think she does need to improve because there was a lack of selling in her match. And I just find it crazy that Shawn Michaels is the man in charge of NXT and there is pretty much no selling in the main event. I mean, surely Shawn Michaels should be doing something. What's he telling them? What's he training them? I mean, come on. He should be producing. He should be, surely after the match, he should be like, right, you weren't doing this, you weren't doing that. I mean, I'm not saying he's a head trainer or anything like that, but if he's the guy that's running NXT, his influence should be should be evident on these shows. And for some reason, HBK, arguably the best seller in all of wrestling. And we've got NXT, a show where a lot of times there is no selling, especially for Tiffany Stratton. I don't get it. Anyway, let's kick off the show. Braun Breaker, Baron Corbin, or maybe the American badass Baron Corbin. He came out riding a bike. you love to see it. Hopefully this is a, a new thing for Corbin. I don't know, just see a different entrance, you know, just something different, something cool. Just seeing some big guy come out on a bike. It looks badass. It does. It looks good. So, well, let's see more of that. Uh, good match between Breaker and Corbin to start things off. Big hard-hitting match. Corbin doing his spears. Uh, Braun Breaker doing his spear, sorry, Corbin got his choke slam in, big moves, big power moves, big military press slam for Breaker, uh, Breaker again, another guy that is destined for the main roster, and I think Baron Corbin coming down to NXT has done him a world of good, and you know, I, I know I've complained about Becky Lynch being in NXT, but at least Baron Corbin has moved and he seems to be just solely now on NXT. It's not like he's coming here just to hoover a belt off somebody. He's actually coming here to work and put in put in the hard time and actually be a member of the NXT roster, not just come and steal a belt. So I think Corbin's return to NXT has been good. End of the match, we have Robert Stone returning. Uh, this distracted Breaker. Stone tried to do a crossbody. Breaker catches him. Breaker throws him to the side. And then Corbin hits the end of days and he picks up the victory. And I like how the end of days is pretty much when he hits it, it's over. That's the way a finisher should be. And I remember Corbin he protected that for years and years and years. I think it was it Roman Reigns that kicked out of it for the first time. Probably was him, to be fair. But I, I like how when Baron Corbin hits the end of days, it's the end of the match. It's a finisher for a reason. So let's go back. Let's start doing that again. Let's have him finishers finish the match. Uh, up next with Mysterio versus Williams. I uh, wasn't a big fan of this. I mean, I, I like Trick Williams and I like Dominic Mysterio. Just didn't think the match was great. Ending looked a bit off. Trick Williams hits a knee. We've got a new WWE NXT North American Champion. I didn't really mind Dominic being on NXT because he's a young guy. But I honestly don't see the point of like a 37-year-old Becky Lynch coming and just winning the championship and uh, ruining uh, the first ever title reign of Tiffany Stratton. I might sound a little bit better about that. I'm not though. I just, I just don't see the point of, of them doing that. But whatever. We'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, we then get Joe Gacy tell Ava Rain to leave because the schism is dead. Gacy says that he needs to find his own purpose. So 
Is that Joe Gacy and Ava Rain done? Let's hope so, because the Shizzam are fucking shite. Honestly, what a horrible tag team. How the hell can they think what the Rock's daughter? How can they have the Rock's daughter? And I, I don't know the best thing to do here, but surely it's not sticking her in some fucking uh, like cheap version of the Judgment Day. You know, some stupid four roots, one tree fucking garbage shit. Uh, it's the Rock's daughter, for God's sake. I mean, why not have her do something else? Surely. Sticker with someone that's like The Rock, someone a bit more charismatic. I don't, I don't know. Do something with her. Don't be putting her in a golf stable. What's this all about? Uh, third match was the tag team match. It was the the family. We also got a, a Brian Pillman Jr. thing yet, by the way. So it looks like Brian Pillman Jr. could be debuting in NXT soon. Uh, third match: the family versus the Creed Brothers versus Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo versus Bronco Nima and Lucian Price. We scripts, fatal four we match, Tony, big Tony D got taken out for the majority of the match, he comes down late on, hits a flurry of offence, the family hit the bada boom, bada bing, and they pick up the win and they pick up the victory and they keep their tag team titles, so, and before this we got a nice wee dinner segment. Not sure if this happened in NXT or if it just happened earlier in the night, but I like this. They're sitting down at dinner and the family's discussing who they're going to defend the belts against, and they're just like, fuck it, we'll take all these on because that's what we want to do. We want to prove ourselves against all challengers. Uh, then we got the Heritage Cup, Noam Dar versus. Who was he against? Butch. Yeah, Butch from SmackDown. Don't know why Butch is back on NXT. It goes to the sixth round. It was 1-1. We got interference from the Gallus boys. Gallus boys on top. Does this mean that the Gallus boys are going to get in a feud now with the Brawling Brutes? I mean, probably. I could see that happening. Don't really want to see it, but I do see it happening. And uh, that led to uh, Dar getting the win because Joe Coffey came out and he planted Butch with the best for the Bells. Which is basically a clothesline that doesn't look that good. <laughs> and Dar wins by uh, two falls to one in the end. Uh, then we got a, an announcement for a two-week Halloween Havoc TV special on the USA Network starting on the 24th of October. And it will run for two weeks. So 24th of October and the 31st of October. So um, yeah, should be some good matches on that. Last time they did a, a two-week special Gold Rush. I think they had all the titles on the line. So I imagine it will be something similar to that. Up next with Carmelo Hayes versus Ela Dragunov for the WWE Championship. And... Pretty good match, I liked it. Lots of big finishers, lots of big moves, lots of big impact moves. Um, Dragunov plants Hayes late on with a super H-bomb. And that was it, he did it off the top rope because he... First, I think this H-bomb looks like shit. I mean, it's basically just a, a forearm, like a diving. And, and don't get me wrong, in, in UFC, if someone plants this on you, then it's probably going to hurt and it's probably going to finish the fight. But at the end of the day, this is wrestling, it's not a real fight, so... I'm just I'm not a big fan of this move. I don't think it's a wrestling move. I don't think it's a sports entertainment-like move. And I just don't think it should be winning world titles. But it did. He kicked it the first two, but then he did it off the top rope. And that was it. We have a new champion, Dragunov Hugs Hayes, after the match. And the commentary team put over the fact that both these guys are still in their 20s. And that they're going to be the future of the company. And again, look, I think this makes sense because you've had Hayes win the belt. He obviously won it for Braun Breaker. And then he has lost it to Dragunov. But, like, how dumb would it have been if, let's say, like, let's say Hayes is a couple of months into his title reign. And they just brought someone from the main roster just to beat him. Someone... Like, LA Knight just comes to the main roster and wins the NXT title when the guy's, like, 40. Uh, that would that would have made zero sense just to ruin Carmelo Hayes' like, championship reign like that. And I feel that's what they've done with Tiffany Stratton. So let's talk about that up next. Becky Lynch, Tiffany Stratton, Extreme Rules match for the WWE Women's Championship. Look, in terms of weapons, in terms of high-flying spots, in terms of extreme spots and big spots... 
you, know, you you can't complain. This match had a shitload of stuff. We had uh, weapons, the chairs. You tr there was a shopping cart. I thought, although Becky Lynch could barely move the shopping uh, shopping cart. I thought it was pretty poor, <laughs> very embarrassing. She could barely move it. She like ro she like rammed it into steel steps at one mile per hour. I thought that was a little bit cheap. Becky Lynch needs to get some more muscles. Um, with the, the big moonsault from Tiffany Stratton, she did like a, a flying senton off the announce table onto a chair, she did the handspring elbow through the ring barricade, uh, we had Becky Lynch do a bunch of good moves as well, well not really but <laughs> she done some, uh, Tiffany Stratton hit a senton, flying swanton bomb off the top rope to the outside through a table that didn't really break and she does that, uh, so she does this move, swanton bomb, off the top rope through a table and within seven seconds Tiffany Stratton got up and she threw Becky Lynch back into the ring. It's like, come on, you've just done this big high flying manoeuvre. Can you remember when Jeff Hardy done a swanton off like the top rope to the outside or off a ladder through a table? I mean that was him out. You know, they were they were selling that thing for like the next minute at least. And probably a couple of minutes if it's like a multi-man matchup. But if it was only one on one, then they would at least sell that. For a bit. You, when did you ever see Jeff Hardy fly off a ladder, crash through a table, and then just bounce up straight away and throw his opponent in the ring? You know, it, it didn't happen because they actually sold the manoeuvres. And despite Tiffany Stratton being so athletic and she's got a lot of ability, and I'm a big fan, probably my favourite female in the WWE, to be honest, and I really like her, but shit like this holds her back. And shit like this prevents me from saying, you know, this match is great or this match is... What I will say is this match had a lot of good spots in it, but as a match, I mean, this is not good. It is, it's not. Like, look at Shawn Michaels in his fucking peak. Shawn Michaels comes back. Look at his unsanctioned match against Triple H. Sh Shawn Michaels, every big move, he sold the shit out of it. Could you imagine if Shawn Michaels climbs the, the ladder, elbow drop on Triple H through a table? And then he, he just like lifts Triple H up like two seconds later to try and hit like a pedigree or something. Come on. It, it didn't happen. You know, Shawn Michaels could sell. And I just don't understand how he is the leader. He runs NXT. And Tiffany Stratton, in my opinion, is the best thing on NXT. She's the biggest star on NXT. She's the thing with the most potential. And she's not been taken to the side. And she's not been taught or she's not been learned or she's not been coached by Shawn Michaels or anyone that works with Shawn Michaels that you can't do this shit. I, I just don't get it. But, I mean, whatever, end of the match, we see um, Tiffany goes for uh, a moonsault. Uh, she ends up missing the moonsault and she lands on to the stack of chairs that were in the ring and then Becky hits the manhandle slam on the chairs and gets the one, two, three. And another thing about Becky Lynch is here, she has, she's one of the most unathletic wrestlers I think we've got here in WWE. When you look at the, the women that are considered at the top of the company, when you've got like a I know people are going to people are going to complain here and people are going to lose their shit, but when you've got like a Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, uh, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, I mean these are all women that are athletic. These are all women that fucking have athletic bones in their body. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, very athletic. You look at Becky and she is, she's just not. I mean, Becky Lynch is not athletic whatsoever. Everything she does, it does look a bit like shit. I mean, it does. I think she got lucky, honestly. If Nia Jax never punched her in the nose, she'd have probably held the Women's Championship a couple of times. But would she have transitioned into this massive main event? I mean, I, I, I'm not too sure. I think, I think Becky Lynch, as a performer, I mean, she gives her all. I'm not going to deny that. But from an ability standpoint, is she great? No, I, I think she's far fucking from it. She reminds me of, like, Road Dog or something. <laughs> it's like watching the, a female version of the Road Dog. Just not very good. Just in there. But she tries. So, I mean, I'll give her that. Even when you see her do her, she does that, like, leg drop where she'll do, like, a... It's like a seat at Centom where she'll drop like both legs across. I wish she'd drop both legs across me, but anyway, uh, she does this move where she like drops both legs, and it's like she's so small and so skinny, and it's like who the fuck is that going to heart? And because she's not athletic, she can't really put any sort of like she can't put any spin on it. She can't like put any 
sort of impact on the move. It's like she just throws her body to, onto the person and hopes for the best. And it's like, I mean, you can't do that. If you're a big fucker like Nia Jackson, maybe you can do that because it's going to hurt either way. But you need to be like, look at The Rock, okay? The Rock, his elbow drop, <laughs> his finisher was an elbow drop, okay? But when The, when the Rock hit the elbow drop, holy fuck, he, he, he stuck it in like a dagger. You see the velocity that The Rock hit that shit with? There might only been an elbow drop, but the, the, the electricity running through that elbow when The Rock delivered it, it, it made it look like a big move. Then you've got Becky Lynch just doing this little, you know, two-footed leg drop thing, and it's like, it looks like shit. It does look like shit. Anyway... That's it, guys. Uh, I'm not going to rant here too much about Becky Lynch. That's probably for another video. That's the end of your NXT moment. And it might have sounded like I ranted about quite a lot of that, but I actually did enjoy it. I just think that if Tiffany Stratton can get better at selling, if she actually begins to sell moves, and if she can learn, then I think she will hands down be the best female in this company. And it's not even going to be fucking close, but she, does, she needs to improve when it comes to to sell and she really does so hopefully she can do that and um we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens but we've got a new nxt champion and eli dragunov we've got becky lynch remaining the nxt women's champion and we've got baron corbin basically now coming out in a bike looking like a badass so there you go guys that's your nxt no mercy review i'll get i'll get a four a ten four out of ten had i'm not gonna lie had um the match the main event had better selling i would i would give it like a five or a six but the, ma the main event, just the, the selling was not there, so unfortunately, it's going to lose a point or two for that. Anyway, guys, catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.